Hello, this is Josh, and welcome back to Too Many Topics. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at the first couple of the G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Island figures that I have. Finally, so <laughs> Cobra Island is this line of Target-exclusive G.I. Joe figures that started back in 2020 and were an absolute disaster when they first launched. I know that people could never find them, they could never get pre-orders in online, they could never get them, like, at all, and they had Hasbro, like, reissue them in 2021, and then they just kept making more, they just kept announcing more and more of Cobra Island, and now that's over. Uh, no more of that, because now there is Python Patrol and Tiger Force, which is just the same thing, essentially, under a different name. However, for whatever reason, uh, a couple of months ago, like, June-ish 2022, some, not all, but some of the Cobra Island figures uh, got, like, no longer Target exclusive locked, and now were available for fan channel retailers to just order. And so, a couple, and not all of them, like I said, like, I know the Cobra Troopers and stuff like that were not made available on other retailers, uh, but some of them were. And so, for, you know, a couple months, they've had them, and I am collecting or trying to kind of collect all of the classified series figures. And so, today, I have some Cobra Island figures to take a look at here, finally, uh, because these are the first ones that I have. And the way that I got these ones is because of Dorkside Toys. So basically a couple of weeks ago, Dorkside Toys had this summer sale going on where they had a couple things on pretty good discounts and they were basically in stock until they were gone. And it took like a week for them to ship this. Uh, and this arrived like nearly a week ago or the, actually probably like a week and a half ago at the time that you're seeing this video. And it's actually a good idea that I waited to unbox this for so long uh, because I actually ended up getting a third Cobra Island figure as well. Uh, but this one, these are the first two. Uh, that I got from the Dorkside sale. Uh, so these were the only ones that Dorkside had on the sale. And like I said, I'm not, I basically, I'm trying to be completionist on this line eventually, uh, but I, you know, don't have like a ton of money to spend on it between all my Tokusatsu endeavors. Uh, however, when I saw the deal on these ones and, you know, knowing that they're Cobra Island ones, kind of hard to find, sort of, I, uh, I wanted to jump on it. So this is a pretty big box for what's in here. Wow, because that's a huge box. I did not realize, wow, holy crap. I had no idea that Cobra, or the, the coil with Baroness was this big. Okay, we're gonna move this box out of here. Okay, so here's this, the Baroness with Cobra coil, which, wow, that looks awesome. <laughs> I didn't realize how, I mean, I did, I've seen this before, clearly. But I didn't realize how cool this would be and how big the box was in person. And I also got this one as well. Uh, this is the Cobra Island roadblock. Um, so I think I now have pretty much every roadblock, finally. Um, so I know this one's actually not very hard to get whatsoever. Uh, but basically, because like you can still get this one on the Target website at the time of me making this video, I believe. I don't know why this one was like not rare at all. I guess people just had enough roadblocks between the Wave 1 one and the, the slightly different paint application one of the Wave 1 one. And also the Amazon exclusive uh, heavy artillery one, which I have as well. This was the last roadblock that I didn't have, essentially. Besides the paint application, uh, different one. I don't have that one. Um, so this is number 11 in the line. So that's very helpful because uh, I think I have... Actually, no, I think this is like, I was going to say, do I have like 8, 9, 10? I do not. This is, this is the first, I don't know what I'm saying. Moving on from that. Uh, this is the first one that I have that is not uh, like a normal size box besides the Crocmaster. And um, this is significantly big. So I did not realize how big this box was. I guess I just didn't really realize how big the bike was. So I definitely see why the bike sets that they do at Target, because they do those at Target a lot, uh, are significantly more expensive. So if you're curious what these cost uh, deal-wise and why I jumped on this now, uh, that's because this was $25 at the Dorkside to uh, sale, and this was $15. So after tax and everything like that, I think this entire order was like $43 bucks or something, which is essentially the price of this uh, by itself. So it was almost like I kind of got this for free, sort of, if you pretend like I paid retail for this. Um, so that is really, really awesome. Uh, this is my third Baroness and my third Roadblock, which is just kind of funny how that worked out. Uh, because I have the movie Baroness, and I have the uh, Walmart retro carded Baroness, but I'm not going to open that one. Um, so this is the first, like, non-movie Baroness that I will actually open. And then, continuing with Cobra Island as well, uh, I got a box from my buddy Toku Chris the other day, and uh, I had ordered the Triceratops Paleo Max Ranger from RPM, and he also threw in, because he knew I didn't have it, he threw in Firefly, which is really, really awesome. Uh, this is one of the Cobra Island ones that I really did want, and they didn't. this is not part of the... Uh, the fan channel restocks in 2022, if I remember correctly, because I know that uh, Beachhead was part of the restocks for 2022, and then these two, and then uh, the one that looks like Jake Gyllenhaal. 
I forget his name, but uh, there's a picture of it up on screen right now. But I really, really wanted Firefly. And so I really appreciate Toka Chris uh, giving me one here, which is awesome. So this looks sweet. I really just like the camo design and everything on him. And I like his little drones and everything that he's got going on. So he's number 21. So I got number 11 and 21 and 13 uh, for the G.I. Joe Classified. So that makes this my like 20, 21st and 22nd figures respectively, I think, if I'm not mistaken correctly. If I'm not mistaken correctly, what, what did that even mean? But yeah, so I'm pretty sure that that's what we got. I'm not sure exactly what the next uh, thing I'm going to get is, but this is definitely getting me hyped uh, for Hasbro to take my money for the His Tank, uh, which has probably already happened by the time you're seeing this video, but I'm recording this on August 12th in the his tank ends on the end of the 15th so i think i'm uploading this like on the 16th or something like that so by the time that you see this video uh, i'm sure it's done but uh yeah let's open this stuff so here are the three cobra island figures out of the box and these are awesome these are really really cool um obviously gi joe classified always packs in a ton of accessories not so much with the roadblock over here but i think he comes with a perfectly fine amount of stuff especially since I got him on the discount and everything like that. But like, wow, this Baroness is loaded. So many things in here. Uh, and the coil is fantastic, and I really like Firefly over here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, and we're going to take a look at Baroness first, uh, since she is... Well, actually, we'll take a look at Roadblock first, since he's first in the number sequence. So this Roadblock is perfectly good. Uh, to, to be honest, I think it might be my favorite of the three Roadblock figures that I have, and I will compare the three here in a second. Uh, but I don't really know why this one is... I mean, I don't even know if it's actually disliked. I just kind of assume so, due to the fact that it's the, like one Cobra Island figure from like that first wave from 2020, which I think it is from that. It might be from like the second wave uh, that you can still get on target like perfectly, readily, easily. Uh, but I really do like this like shirt that he's wearing with the GI Joe symbol. I think that looks really cool and how it still kind of continues onto the joint there. So when you kind of break it up a little bit, you can still see it. I think that's pretty neat. I also just really like these like sunglasses he has or these kind of. Uh, I don't know, goggles kind of, and they are removable. They're just a little difficult to kind of get into the little slots on the sides of his face, but they are removable and they come like that in the box, uh, like off his face, you have to put them on. Uh, but I do really like this a lot. I mean, I guess it's maybe probably down to the fact that he doesn't have too many accessories because the only thing he does come with is the giant gun that he had in his original Wave 1 release, but it is in a different color. Now for that one, they actually packaged the little magazine separately and here they already had it attached. So, but for the most part, it's exactly the same exact thing. And then I'm going to kind of pan the camera down a little bit here and I will bring in my other two roadblocks, which I have sitting in this box conveniently available for this video. So uh, essentially, I'm pretty sure all three of these have the same legs. <laughs> so I don't see why they would uh, have swapped the legs on this, but we have right here is the wave one roadblock. Uh, the number one is like zero one in the line. Uh, then we have the heavy artillery roadblock, which I know is a lot of people's personal favorites. So uh, this is the Amazon exclusive one. And then obviously we have the Target exclusive uh, Cobra Island one, and we'll kind of move the camera back up a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, all of these I think are cool in their own way. This is kind of more of that when the line is going for its sort of futuristic kind of look of the characters. And then this one I think is supposed to be a little bit more of his original design. And then honestly, I don't really know what this one's supposed to be, but it's still really cool. Uh, but as you can see, the legs are the exact same. Uh, both of these have the same little uh, like knee pad. This one does not have that. Um, this one has an actual gun holster, this one does not. Uh, this one has the knife holster, this one doesn't. So, and the faces are all different, all different facial expressions. Uh, he has the same arm tattoo, I think, on these two. Uh, this one, he had it removed, I guess. So there is no arm tattoo on the heavy artillery one, which is just kind of weird, uh, kind of bizarre. And then I do like that you have like, uh, you know, basically no beard, kind of just like a little stubble there or whatever. Then you have a kind of like the full beard look. And then you kind of have like a little bit of a beard. I don't know. I think that looks pretty neat. Um, so they're all different in their own like right. I mean, obviously it's the same kind of character. But honestly, I'll pr I would probably lean with the look of Cobra Island as my favorite one. And probably the accessories of Heavy Artillery as my favorite or sex accessories wise. Uh, but, you know, this gun is kind of neat, I suppose. But, you know, neat to have all three of them. Definitely uh, fine with that since they are so all unique. But uh, there is that one. And the next up in the number order would be Baroness. And wow, <laughs> this set is awesome. I know a lot of people were kind of upset when it first came out because it was the only way to get a Baroness in the line, which is a very strange way to like, you know, lock this important character into, as a target exclusive. They actually haven't even released a regular Baroness outside of this set, except for the movie uh, Snake Eyes Origin one. So that's very strange, but uh, this figure is fantastic. I love all of the like texture design and everything all over her armor. And uh, it's just really cool. Like it just looks really neat. 
And of course, she has a ton of accessories here. I do believe that the glasses are removable, question mark? Actually, maybe not. They come, they're separate in the box on the retro card, so I, and this is the same mold as that, which I'll take a look at in a second. At least I'm pretty confident. I'm not opening the retro carded ones, so I don't know for 100% certainty, but I assume so. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's good. Uh, also, G.I. Joe figures, for the most part, I don't really have super, super tight joints that are, make me afraid of them snapping. Uh, that one, I think it's as far as I'm going to be able to move that arm, so because I don't want to snap it. Uh, obviously, this armor right here, this kind of buckle, is a little loose on the waist there. Um, this was also kind of moving around, the little knife holster. Uh, so another thing that's always really cool about G.I. Joe figures is that pretty much you can holster nearly all of the accessories that they come with kind of i mean baroness here comes with so much guns and stuff you're not gonna be able to do that for everything uh, but you do get these two giant guns here which are basically just mirrored versions of themselves although hold on they have peg holes on them so i'm actually wait do they peg into the bike <laughs> actually i never really thought about that before ah. <laughs> so they can peg into the bike so i didn't even think about that being a factor but okay that's really cool so you can still you might be able to nearly store everything then uh actually let's go ahead and peg in the other one on this side because that that does look pretty neat and also kind of makes sense to give the bike uh, itself some weaponry obviously you can tell that they have full-on you know triggers and handles and everything so you could have a figure hold them uh, but that looks pretty cool though i definitely dig that uh, for uh, as for like weapons that she can have on her uh, armor somewhere you get these two little golden pistols, which are pretty neat, and it looks like you can holster them back here, kind of under her hair. It's a little hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure that, that would work. Yep, so there's one of them, and then, oop, didn't have a good grip on it. And there is the other one, so that's really cool. Still, like I said, I love that kind of feature on these figures. Uh, you also have this, come on, stand up. You also have this really cool knife that has a little cobra on the handle so that is really cool and uh, that would fit right into the knife holster on her leg like so maybe it's backwards it actually might be backwards although it also might not matter but i kind of want the cobra face facing outwards so there you go and that gold just kind of really makes her stand out you know with the accessories that's really cool and uh, then you also get this cobra this is also like a gun kind of you can kind of see like this little uh like blaster in its mouth really don't know how you're supposed to hold this necessarily but it still just looks really sweet though you also can kind of just have it sitting next to here if you want uh there's obviously this this is the other handlebar of the bike you need to attach that it came out of the box without the handle bike attached just because of how it was put in the plastic tray and then the only other thing you have here is you have a swappable head actually uh, kind of taken from the lightning collection uh, because this is a helmet which at first i was like there's no way they expect us to like peg this into her like head or something. I thought maybe the hair could come off like uh, Lady Jane's or something like that. Uh, but no, it does actually seem like they want you to take the head off completely. Uh, so that was actually pretty easy. <laughs> actually, it wasn't too bad. Uh, we'll see how easy this one is to get on there. Uh, so, ooh, very nice neck joint there. Very similar dumbbell joints as to like what's on the Lightning Collection, although it doesn't really seem like it wants to move too much. So I'm not going to try to, uh, to force it to, but uh, let's see how easy is it to get this head on. So there we go, it's on there good enough. Uh, it might not be on there fully tight, uh, but then we will also go ahead and uh, fully attach the handlebar, which is just in this little peg hole, I think is where it's supposed to go. Oh, that's gonna be tricky to get, to get that to go in there. Oh boy. All right, got that in there too. That was very tricky. I was not a fan of that. Uh, but real quick before I try to put her on the bike, and I probably should have done this before I swapped the head, uh, but I do want to compare this to the other Baronesses that I have. Um, so in the box down here, I also have my only other out-of-box Baroness, which is the uh, Snake Eyes Origins movie one, uh, which is significantly different. Obviously, it's you know still a Baroness, and I think it still kind of passes as a perfectly fine one. Uh, you know, not like you know cartoon accurate or anything like that, but it does look perfectly fine. Uh, as you can see, kind of similar armors, but definitely still completely different molds and everything like that. And was you know until I got this uh, one with the coil, it was perfectly good as my Baroness representation for my collection. And then the only other one that I have is this one which did just recently release and that is the retro carded uh, walmart baroness so oop, wrong way there we go so i'm pretty confident that these are the same figure pretty sure just painted a little bit differently as you can see uh you don't have kind of that differentiation uh, i'm not going to say that word correctly differentiation of the like gray paint and stuff there it's just all black on this one 
Uh, you obviously get some different guns. I think these are the same gold and pistols, but all black. Uh, I don't know. This big gun probably got released somewhere else, but I'm not exactly percent exactly 100% sure where. Uh, but you still have the gun holsters back there. Uh, the knife holster is gone because there's no knife on her. Uh, the glasses, as you can see, are not attached in there. I think it's also a completely different head. Although maybe it just it's a different uh, paint. Well, no, I mean, it kind of looks different. Maybe it is just a different paint. I'm not 100% sure. I think you obviously get that kind of retro stand right there as well. So, you know, very similar figures. Obviously, it's working from this Target mold for this Walmart one. But, uh, you know, I still probably like this one. They're kind of, they're kind of great and everything. Kind of getting like a Black Widow sort of suit vibe from this. And uh, But this is still really cool, though. I know this one's technically more accurate to, like, the retro stuff. Because, you know, it's the retro card back. So, there is that one. Now, we can go ahead and try to attach Baroness to the bike. Which, actually, I should probably just take a look at the bike. Because this thing is pretty awesome. It's significantly big. Uh, it has a kickstand that you can retach, retach, or, you know, attach up there. Uh, the wheels are nice. Uh, this one has sort of a rubbery, I mean, they kind of have like a rubbery feel to them. Um, it feels rather cheap, honestly, but like it does look neat on display. I do like this kind of like window kind of gradient you got going on there. You got the, the Cobra logo on it and everything. Uh, this is going to look pretty nice. Uh, kind of just riding and rolling it all inside my hiss tank because those are the only vehicles that I have right now. Uh, I should probably get a Joe vehicle because right now my Cobra army is uh, fully decked out in vehicles and uh, personnel and weapons and my, my Joes just have three roadblocks and a couple of other people are just kind of chilling around. <laughs> so I really need to uh, fix up that, uh, that power difference there. So as you can see, as I just noticed, there's peg holes right there on the uh, kickstands or on the pedals. So I assume that you can actually peg her feet in. Ooh, I just moved to the kickstand. So this is gonna be a little tricky, I would imagine. Oh yeah, definitely gonna be tricky. So <laughs> I might even just try to ignore that. Uh, let's see. I should probably have gotten her like in a sitting pose first, instead of like just like trying to just plop her on there. So I guess that's what kind of what we want to be going for. Something sort of like that. And then the handlebars can kind of move all over the place. Uh, and I know it's going to be a little tricky to get her hand to wrap around this thing. So I'm probably just going to cut to this being done. All right, so that's something. It's not perfect, but I definitely kind of got her sitting on there. And you can still kind of have the knife uh, in the holster and the guns and everything. So that looks pretty sweet. Like I said, it will look pretty cool uh, being on display with the Hiss tank when that ships in like a year or something. So also this wheel can kind of rotate and everything. And it does kind of is sort of controlled by the handlebars up there. I do like this kind of little like cockpit, not really cockpit, like, you know, the little dials and stuff she's got going on. So yeah, this one's pretty cool. Definitely my favorite of the ones I've gotten today. But we still have one more to take a look at, and that is Firefly here, which is really neat. Really, really like this one a lot. I just love the camo design and everything he's got going on here. And this guy is ready to detonate some bombs, let me tell you, or some drones or whatever he wants to do. So I also didn't really mention the fact that you have all these different Cobra Island artworks on the back. They are all slightly different uh, between all of them, which is kind of neat. So this one, obviously there's not a ton of articulation for him because he has this giant rubber like chest over his entire body. So that definitely limits his articulation quite a bit. He kind of just has to stand there and just be ready to go, I suppose. But he obviously has a lot of accessories because that's what these figures have. So you have this thing, these things, that thing, a gun and a drone. So what's also really cool, like I said earlier, is to kind of just finding where all these accessories can go on the figure because i'm pretty sure you can have him hold or holster most of these things uh, so obviously you get this backpack which is a uh, pretty typical oh, hold on can you store the pad in his backpack god i love this line this line is so cool wow that is really cool so this is i'm assuming kind of like a detonator ipad or something or a device or a detonator device that's freaking cool so you can store this back there in the backpack why is this line so good? And then you can peg this back here like that. And then I think, can you even peg in the drone? There's no way you can peg in the drone, right? That'd be crazy. Or wait, hold on, hold on. Oh my God, you can. <laughs> wow, you really, okay. You're gonna be able to get him to like hold everything, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, you can. He's, oh my God, cause you can hold this back, wow. Okay, so like you also have this gun, which is pretty cool. See, because it's always kind of difficult kind of getting the, uh, you know, the weapons and everything in their hands, but it is really fun, like I said, just trying to find where you can peg everything in at, and you can peg this in back there, which is a little tight. 
you might want to actually fold it up a little bit. And then you can take his little uh, bomb that he's got going on here, and you can peg that into the bottom of the backpack. So you can have him fully decked out here. And I didn't really show it off with the drone, but the drone does have, as you can see, it kind of folded down. It does have like articulation in the legs there. It looks kind of like, it makes me think of like a Mauser from, uh, or Mauser from TMNT. But you can kind of have that folded down if you want, which kind of makes it look like he's got like a little speaker stereo system or something <laughs> right there, which is pretty neat. But like, wow, look at that. All the accessories stored on there somewhere. Nothing lingering about except for these goggles, which I'm pretty sure are very similar. They're not the exact same, I don't think, uh, from the ones that are on the uh, Cobra Vipers, I think. But uh, you can go ahead and have these. Oh, there goes the, the bomb. So that fell into the abyss. Uh, so let's see how difficult it is to get these goggles on. I have successfully retrieved that from the abyss and kind of got the goggles on. And now Firefly is fully decked out in all of his accessories. So that is <laughs> such a cool one. So we have this figure. We have the, the Baroness with the coil. We have a roadblock. And these are my first exposure to the Cobra Island figures from G.I. Joe. So obviously there's a lot more of these I need to get. I have said numerous times in this video I'm kind of trying to go completionist on this line. But this is a good start for now. And we'll kind of just see how long it takes me to track down the other ones. Because I'm not... Super, super pressed to do it immediately. I know it's going to be expensive and everything. Certain ones of them are already very hard to find. But thanks once again to Toku Chris for helping me out with this one. And thanks for Dorkside Toys for having these two on a really good sale. Because it was just a great opportunity to add three more Classified Series figures to my collection. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this unboxing and my first impressions of the G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Island figures. And of course, be sure to subscribe to Too Many Topics for tons of other videos on just random stuff. And you can follow me, Josh, on Twitter at LivingRangerKey or at LandFicPR, and I'll see you all next time.